and welcome back to my Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Review Marathon, where we've already covered the five main games in the series, and for most people, I think that's all they know about the franchise. However, there are actually two more Pro Skater games released in the series, one of which being Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD, which was released on the Xbox 360, PS3 and PC, and the other one is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X, which is what we're looking at today. And if you're wondering what the X stands for in Pro Skater 2X, it's probably extra, because of the extra amount of effort they went to when making this game. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD and Pro Skater 2X act as remakes of Pro Skater 1 and 2, meaning that the upcoming remake, which is slated for release on the PS4, Xbox One and PC, will be the third time that the original two games have been remade. But which is the best of the three remakes? Well, to answer that question, I'm gonna need to play through them all. So, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X was released in 2001, and strangely was only available on the original Xbox. This is odd considering how heavily associated the series was with PlayStation at the time, but the story goes that the game was made as compensation to Xbox players after the Xbox version of Pro Skater 3 had to be delayed. But I'm not too sure about that. You're telling me that it took less time to remake two entire games than to pour over an already finished game? It seems a bit sketchy to me, but either way, here we are with an Xbox exclusive Tony Hawk game. Not only is the game an original Xbox exclusive though, but it's also exclusive to North America never seeing a release in any regions outside of there, meaning that for someone living in the UK, or other parts of Europe, or basically anywhere else on the planet other than America, this game is not only difficult to get your hands on, but also difficult to get work in even if you do own a copy, and this is due to the fact that the Xbox is region locked. So in order to actually play this game, I not only needed to import a copy of it in from America, but I also needed to get my hands on a modded original Xbox that's region free. So I now have an entire console that's dedicated to playing this one Tony Hawk game. It's basically a Tony box. Also, if you're wondering what the X stands for in 2X, it's probably Xbox, with it being an Xbox exclusive. Enough about that though, let's get into the specifics. What is Pro Skater 2X? Well, it's a full remake of Pro Skater 1 and 2, featuring every single level from the two games in one package. It also has every single mode featured in those two games, from the multiplayer options, to create a skater, to create a park. It's all here. The most obvious difference between 2X and the originals is that the graphics in 2X are much better, Everything is much crisper, there's improved textures and added details in certain levels too, and this is easily the best the games have ever looked. They even went as far as to add 3D grass rather than it just being a flat texture, so yeah, they really didn't skimp on the attention to detail. It also runs a lot better, which is a huge positive because the original games stuttered pretty frequently, and this is probably the main reason the originals can feel a bit dated going back to them today, especially with Pro Skater 1. But 2X runs at a solid 60 frames a second, just like Pro Skater 3 and 4, which is amazing. It's not just the graphics and performance enhancements that make this an impressive version of the game though. They also made some quality of life improvements, which makes the game feel more in line with Pro Skater 3. They did stuff like adding in a grind balance meter which was strangely absent from the original Pro Skater 2, as well as allowing you to manual in Pro Skater 1 levels. It not only brings Pro Skater 1 up to the standard of the second game, but then it also improves on the second game to bring it more up to the standard of Pro Skater 3, which is incredible. They even added in the ability to create a female custom skater in this game, which strangely was a feature that was absent from Pro Skater 2. Speaking of which, let's have a game of created skater or real skater, shall we? I bet you've all missed that with us not being able to do it in Pro Skater 5. The creation options here are exactly the same as the ones from Pro Skater 2. There's nothing new aside from being able to make the female skaters, which is maybe a bit of a shame. 
but still, the creation options in the original game were still enough to make a perfect representation of myself, so let me know if you can tell the difference between the image on the left and right. It just looks like a mirror image to me, but I swear I'm not using editing trickery, and one of them is the in-game version of me. The Creator Park mode is also identical to the one seen in Pro Skater 2, although I suppose it does have more themes to choose from this time, which is nice, but in terms of the objects available to you, it's the same. You might say that the park and skater creation options not being expanded is a negative, but to be honest, I don't really mind this too much, and the reason for this is because I found the creation options to be pretty great even in the original. So it doesn't feel too bad being limited to that here. Plus, you also have to consider that I doubt the developers of this game, Treyarch, had much time to put the game together either. So I'm glad they focused more on improving the base game, rather than adding more to the optional stuff. Ideally though, it would have been nice if they were given more time, and then they could have expanded every single element of the game. So Pro Skater 2X might seem like the perfect game, right? It's just a better version of the original two games, and what more could you be asking for? Well, there are a few key areas where I feel like the game could have made a few more changes to the original games, so let's talk about that. But first, if you're wondering what the X stands for in 2X, it's probably extreme, because skating is an extreme sport. The first major thing that I feel like they should have added is the ability to revert. This was a move added into Pro Skater 3, which allowed you to continue a combo after doing vert tricks. And with 2X being developed alongside Pro Skater 3, I feel like maybe this could have been added, and it would have improved the flow of the game to no end. It's not like it feels bad without this being implemented, but it does somewhat restrict you to only doing grinds, manuals and flip tricks while doing combos. Something I feel like they should have removed from the game entirely is the big drop mechanic, which was only ever featured in Pro Skater 2, and yet returns here in 2X. This is where in order to land from a high, you'll need to press the A button just before hitting the floor, or you'll straight up bail. The issue with this is not only that it's kinda pointless and adds nothing to the game, but the timing of the button press is so sporadic, and I never got the hang of it. It just feels unfair and ruins combos for no reason, and I'm so glad that this wasn't in any of the later games. But yeah, it definitely shouldn't have been in 2X. My next negative is a very subjective point, but basically, with this game being an Xbox exclusive, it limits you to only using an Xbox controller to play it. Now, I normally use the D-pad to play Tony Hawk games, and this is an issue when playing 2X, because the D-pad on the Xbox controller is pretty damn poor. So this forced me to use the analog stick, which to be honest for the most part is fine, but I found the game to struggle a bit when you try and stop and rotate on the spot to angle yourself properly. A lot of the time I would either not come to a complete stop, or I would skate off to the left or right instead of rotating. Whether this is an issue with the analog stick itself, or the way the game picks up the input, I'm not too sure, but with a decent D-pad, this wouldn't have been a problem. Another issue is that you can't turn vibration off, and this is a problem because for some reason, the vibration in the controller is insanely strong, and it vibrates all the time too. Even something as simple as skating over a bit of rough terrain will cause vibration, and it's just a little bit immersion breaking at times. Take these issues with a pinch of salt though, because they really aren't that big of a deal. It's just something that's maybe not quite as good as in the original game, but it's not really entirely the game's fault. It's partially the controller not being quite as good as the competitions, at least in my opinion, but some people might prefer the Xbox controller, and then you wouldn't have a problem with this. A bit of an issue is that the game defaults to having this motion blur effect active when you first start the game, and it's just pretty ugly. It's like when you move sometimes you have this wave effect following you, and it's unappealing to say the least. Luckily, you can go into the options and turn this off, which I'm really grateful for, because this honestly would have been annoying me through the entire game if you couldn't disable it. So yeah, I'd recommend the first thing you do when you turn the game on, is to turn motion blur off, because it makes me sick. 
You strangely can't move the camera independently of your character, which makes looking around for collectibles a bit more difficult than it needs to be. And this is yet another thing I feel like they should have taken from Pro Skater 3 and implemented into 2X to bring the standard up to the third game a bit more. But hey, if you know the original games, I guess you won't need to look around anyway, because you already know where everything is. A similar issue is that they didn't add in a proper lip trick system like Pro Skater 3 had, and instead you're stuck with having to only do lip tricks for a second before landing them, and having a very limited amount of lip tricks too. Pro Skater 3 treated lip tricks more like grinds, and it felt a lot more satisfying, so again, it's a bit of a shame this wasn't included. A really great element of 2X is that it features every single song from Pro Skater 2. This is impressive because normally song licenses would expire and stop this from being possible, but somehow, they pulled it off here. What is a bit of a shame though, is that the songs from Pro Skater 1 aren't here, which sucks because some of those are some of my all-time favourite Tony Hawk tracks. However, somewhat making up for this is the fact that 2X supports custom soundtracks, allowing you to play songs from your Xbox's hard drive as the in-game music. So not only could you theoretically get the Tony Hawk 1 songs on your hard drive and play them that way, but you could also play anything you wanted. You're not even limited to Tony Hawk songs anymore. So yeah, I guess this makes up for not having the Pro Skater 1 soundtrack in the game itself, but still, I would have liked it to have been there. All of the negatives I've pointed out so far have been very minimal and can be very easily overlooked considering how good the base game is. The vast majority of the things I just brought up, most people probably wouldn't have even have noticed. But now, let's get on to my biggest issue with the game. But first, if you're wondering what the X stands for in 2X, it's probably excited, because that's what I am whenever I play a Pro Skater game. So Pro Skater 2X includes every level from the first two games, right? That's amazing and I don't want to take away from how good that is, but at the same time, I feel like the way you progress through the game is a bit weird and maybe could have been handled a bit better. When you first start the game, you actually have to play through all of the Pro Skater 2 levels, all in the same order as the original game, before unlocking the Pro Skater 1 levels. Well, actually, before unlocking the Pro Skater 1 levels, you have to play through four of the five levels that are brand new to Pro Skater 2X, but we'll get to those later. Not only is this a bit weird because you'd probably want to play through the levels going from Pro Skater 1 to 2, but it also causes an issue because of the way progression is handled in 2X. Basically, progression is identical to how it was in Pro Skater 2. So you find cash in the levels and you also earn cash by completing goals, then that cash is spent on new decks, tricks and stat points. This is fine and worked perfectly in Pro Skater 2, but the issue is that in 2X you'll have maxed out your stats and have unlocked everything before even getting to the first Pro Skater 1 level. What really makes this bad is that the goals from Pro Skater 1 are completely unchanged from the original game. So in Warehouse, for example, the highest score you need to get is 15,000, but you've just been doing levels asking you to get 250,000 at the end of Pro Skater 2. So not only is there a disconnect in difficulty there, but you'll also have maxed out stats, making it even easier than it would be in the original game. And then add into that, you can also now manual, which was an ability you didn't have in the original Pro Skater 1. So all of these things combined make the Pro Skater 1 levels an absolute piece of cake to get through. So much so that it's a bit too easy. The best thing they could have done here would have been to have made the Pro Skater 1 levels significantly more difficult than what they were in the original. However, the easier way around this would have been to have made the Pro Skater 1 levels appear first and then move on to the more difficult Pro Skater 2 levels. Either way, if you've ever wondered what the X stands for in 2X, then it probably stands for X Games, because that's where Tony Hawk first landed the 900. 
It's also a bit of a shame that the Pro Skater 1 level goals haven't been expanded at all. Pro Skater 2 had not only more goals per level, but also more interesting goals where you needed to do specific tricks in specific areas, among other things. And it's kinda weird how they didn't add this sort of thing to Pro Skater 1's levels. Another thing is that it's extremely strange how doing the Pro Skater 1 levels award you with tapes, just like they did in the original. But unlike in the original, these tapes literally don't do anything in 2x. By the time you're doing the Pro Skater 1 levels, you'll already have all of the cash from the Pro Skater 2 levels, so you'll have already maxed out your stats and unlocked everything, so I guess there's nothing for the tapes to do. But all of this ends up making the Pro Skater 1 levels feel strangely tacked on, when really, they should have been one of the main elements of the game. They don't even feature the cash collectibles from the Pro Skater 2 levels either, which just sucks. I feel like the levels from both games should have been mixed together into one big sort of playlist of levels, rather than being separated into separate career modes. Then the Pro Skater 1 level should have had more goals added to them, the scores you needed should have been increased, they should have given you cash for completing the goals, and cash icons should have been added to the levels too. This would have brought the quality of the Pro Skater 1 levels up to the same standard as the Pro Skater 2 levels, and it would have flowed a lot better. What's even stranger than this though, is that Pro Skater 2X features a total of five brand new levels, which on paper sounds great. Not only are we getting every level from the old games, but five new ones on top of that? Amazing. But there's a catch. Two of the five unlockable levels don't even have any goals to complete, which makes them feel like they had significantly less care put into them than the other levels. Then the third of the five unlockable levels is a competition level, so again, it doesn't have any goals. But I guess being a competition level is better than literally not having anything to do at all. And then the two remaining levels, which do actually have goals, follow the structure of Pro Skater 1 and only have five five goals per level, not even asking you to get a sick score. And the reward for completing these goals is just a tape, so really, you don't actually unlock anything for completing them. It's a bit of a mess to be honest, and I can only assume that these levels were added in at the last minute, which is fine because they went the extra mile by adding in any new content at all, but still, the structure of this game is all over the place. Adding to this problem is that the brand new levels here are really not very good at all. You can tell Neversoft wasn't behind these because they just have practically no flow to them at all. The best two are by far Nightclub and Construction Site, with Nightclub being this level separated into two rooms, one with a bowl area and another with a few vert ramps and a few secret areas higher up, which gives a good sense of verticality. And then Construction Site is a level which is literally all about verticality, making you go up vert ramps to gradually get higher up a building under construction to get the secret tape and skate letters. The thing is though, with both of these levels and the other three more forgettable ones, is that they don't have much flow to them, and it's difficult creating lines for combos because it feels like there's a load of junk all over the place. Overall, it's nice we have some brand new content here, but it's not a reason to buy the game. You'll definitely be wanting to stick to the levels from the original two Pro Skaters. Even with all of the elements of the game I think this should have improved though, ultimately this is the best way of experiencing the levels from Pro Skater 1 and 2, unless of course Pro Skater HD or the upcoming remake are better, but we'll talk about those in later videos. The inclusion of the manual to Pro Skater 1 makes it way too easy because they didn't change the goals, but at the same time it feels weird going back to the original and not having that ability. So I think at the end of the day, I would still rather play the Pro Skater 1 levels in 2x than go back to the original version. The Pro Skater 2 experience here is mostly untouched, but it looks a bit better by improving the textures and models, as well as removing the fog effect which was found in the PS1 version. And on top of that, it also runs better too. So there's really no argument that this is the superior way of playing the second game as well. 
So even though the levels from the first game can feel a bit tacked on, I would still say that this is the definitive version of both games, for now at least. The final aspect of the game I'll talk about here is the multiplayer. Pro Skater 2X is actually pretty interesting in this area, because it features not only all of the modes from Pro Skater 2, which can be played across all of the levels from Pro Skater 1, 2 and the new ones, but it also offers 4 player split screen and 8 player multiplayer via system link. This is amazing because the maximum number of players you could have in the original versions of the first two games was two. So in terms of the multiplayer options here, this is by far the best version of the game. Can you imagine how chaotic an eight player trick attack match would be in a level like Warehouse? It would be ridiculous. What we should take away from this game is that despite it being a really solid remake of the original two games, there is still room for improvement, which hopefully either Pro Skater HD or the upcoming Pro Skater 1 and 2 will act upon. But neither of those have an X in their title. Speaking of which, have you ever wondered what the X stands for in 2X? Well, it might stand for Expert, because that's what you need to be if you want to 100% this game. I'm putting Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X in second place in my series ranking. It's still not as good as Pro Skater 3, because I think they really perfected the level design in that game, and they added in the revert, which was an absolute game-changing mechanic, but Pro Skater 2X is still incredible too. The better graphics and frame rate are the obvious changes which you would expect, but they went the extra mile by adding in a grind meter, female skater customization, and bonus exclusive levels. I just find myself wishing that this game would have come out a little bit later than what it did, just so they had time to enhance the goals in the first game's levels, as well as add in the new mechanics found in Pro Skater 3, with stuff like the Reaver and a better lip trick system. And that's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X, a really great version of the original two games, but one which has some minor flaws. The biggest flaw is that it's not practical to get your hands on if you live anywhere outside of America, which is a real shame considering how good of a game this is. But even ignoring that, the structure of the game is a bit of a mess, the creation options are all unchanged from the original Pro Skater 2, aside from a couple of differences, and they probably should have implemented the revert from Pro Skater 3. But at the end of the day, it's still Pro Skater 1 and 2, so it's difficult to criticise it too heavily when you're having so much fun playing it. Put it this way, if I ever wanted to go back and play the original Pro Skater 1 or 2, I would choose to play 2X over the original versions. And really, that's the sign of a good remake. However, we still have one game in the series left to cover, and it's none other than Pro Skater HD. And this one isn't developed by Neversoft or Treyarch, but instead, Robomodo, the same developers behind Pro Skater 5. May God have mercy on our souls. Normally this is where I would hold up the game case, but Pro Skater HD doesn't actually have a physical edition, so I can't do that. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to see more stuff like this coming soon, and leave a comment down below letting me know if you've played 2X and what you thought about it. And until next time, bye!